Hello and welcome to Kayaking for Autism's channel, also Solar Energy's channel. Here is Mining Mod Beta 1.3, just a test bed for the moment, running in action. Um, I modelled this drill bit here and the rocks. It was r 4 mon who came up with the code to spawn the rocks every five seconds, so that as you see here, you'll see it in a second. Oh, there we go, there's one. New rock just got spawned there. Okay. And um, Insurance did a lot of help, I really thank, thanks a lot, for uh, just tweaking it so that when the rock is in the ground it produces rocks, and when the rock isn't in the ground it doesn't produce rocks. But I need some help with some coding because I've done the uh, next stage of it. I mean, if you remember, um, where is it? Just here. So you see that little sign there? Kerbals, keep danger, keep kerbals out. There we go. See that? And that's basically a little sign I say just to say um, it's not safe for kerbals to be in there. And the idea with this bit at the back basically is um, these rocks here are going to um, get flicked up. So uh, the idea is I use the, um, you see that? The combine harvester drill. Well, it's not a drill, it's a scoop. And the scoop basically flicks the rocks into the back of it. Okay. And this little um, scoop here is so that the rocks, if they're at a fast enough velocity, this is the uh, clever ping-pong bit, they should be pinged up this way. I'll show you from this side, actually. I want the rocks to be pinged up, and they go this way, ping, 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 and they go into the bucket, OK? And the bucket that I've designed is all red and fiery in there. And the reason why it's red and fiery is because you've got this giant solar concentrator here. Now, you need to align that concentrator with the sun, and uh, there's no sun at the moment, but if I go, um... Yep, okay, so now we've produced um, an absolute shit ton of rocks, to the point where I don't know if Unity's going to crash or not, but we have so many rocks there. Okay, but um, the thing is, I need to get that rotor to work. So we will do, what was it, three and four? Because at the moment, I don't have a node collider there, because otherwise it would just rip itself apart. Now I'm not sure if I should use no colliders and try and literally physically use Unity to ping them in, or I should try and work out a bit of code just to say, if a rock's there, make it go that way, five metres per second, basically. And then I could just sort of like skip the physics engine and just code it in, which might be simpler. And the idea is that when those rocks, which are now lagging to hell, because otherwise you just spawn so many rocks, go into the hopper, bing, you've got yourself some minerals. And currently I've only got two rocks that uh, are spawned. Um, so what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I'll quit that simulation because, it, as I said, it's still quite buggy and if you produce too many rocks um, it does start to lag and I haven't got the rock despawner bit of code working yet. Um, but I'll just show you um, quickly. Yes, this uh, this part here was uh, this part here was a part I designed, well, it was inspired by trying to make the spinal column from the precursor ship in Star Control 2 and uh, I didn't quite finish it, because when I tried to make 12 of those segments, it just got too big, you know. So I just figured, okay, well, that's a pretty part. I'll just put it in just for aesthetic. And I was thinking maybe that's a that's going to be a sort of a large cargo bay module, so that the more of these things you've got, the better. The idea is that this solar panel here, which is a, a bunch of mirrors, which this thing here is just a representation of that thing there, which is a solar parabolic mirror that concentrates sunlight onto a point. And the point in this case is... The solar firm is the furnace here, which the rocks get pinged into, and the concentrated solar energy from pew, yeah, burns that rock really, really hot. And I'd love a bit of code also that would simulate a uh, amount of lumens shone on it and what temperature it is. I mean, I can already, I already know the math from physical experimentation, but you know, I want to know how big a mirror do you need to start um, refining heavy metals on the moon that you need for rockets, things like tantalum, things like hafnium, and I've got tantalum actually. I've got, where is it? Just to show you, like, this here is a bit of tantalum, believe it or not. It might look like a button, but it's not. That material there is what makes rocket thruster cones, real ones, okay? Now, if you had to build the von Neumann probe that's go, able to go from the from Earth or Kerbin to the moon or moon, and is able to make turn all this moon rock into that again, and a rocket, it needs to be able to produce all these minerals by itself. And I was thinking basically for this section to sort of counterbalance it, because I was thinking about moving 
um, these wheels over here, so there's still a bit of space for the solar reflector to move so it can face the sun, as long as the sun's coming from that side. Because the idea is this thing goes round, you know, follows the sun around. Yeah, and it can sort of, it's got a little bit of a tilt. And um, yeah, I made these seven meter truss segments and they're well strong. And uh, I've done them with a few less polygons because I realised that the more polygons it's got, like the uh, the more chuggy it is. And you know, Arfamon's uh, code of this damn you Japan, I think his name was, done these cylinders. Now, don't get me wrong, these trusses do look gorgeous compared to my ones, which are all very sort of cuboidal and rocky. But they're the, they're the same thing essentially. You know, I just um, I just think that uh, if you use fewer polygons, it's simpler. And I really need to work a bit more on the textures of. Um, this bit up here, because there was meant to be another funny sign that you're supposed to see, but you couldn't see it. If we quickly go um, launch again, there we go. And the other bit I was going to show you was um, the solar concentrator in action. Okay, so the solar concentrator can go this way. So the sun's over here. Yeah. You can um, point it that way, and you can move the solar solar concentrator here. Yep, and you can move the solar concentrator up and down if you want as well. And it's always shining on that furnace, you see. So the solar energy is always going there. And I suppose that when it's um, when it's fully packed away and you don't want it anymore, you can always just um, put it in a more stable position, like this way, there we go. So maybe that would be better balance, I don't know, and you've got the sun behind you. So you know, you've got quite a good free range of uh, movement, alright, and it's always going to be concentrating the light energy onto the furnace. And that's the bit of code I really want to do, I really want to do a ping pong ping up to there. But you know, at the same time though, the sun would never be above you, so that's that's totally unrealistic. Really, the, the dish will be facing down and up. So we have to go right down, and solar concentrator this way. Yeah, I really need to come up with some sort of rubber rim or something to stop it from bashing onto the ship because this giant solar reflector could be quite heavy. And uh, I had the same problem in real life when the motor would, uh, the arm, rotor arm would just collide with something. And you've got to be careful of that. But um, yeah, this is what I might want to do a solar powered um, mine, mine refinery harvester, solar power station, and 3D printer, which I want to do here, that, you know, a little electron beam melter that's able to just basically turn up. Dig up rock, and it's got, and you can even build extra cargo modules for it if you want. You can even 3D print yourself more cargo modules to add onto it. I mean, that's going to come later. That's like a rep prep mod. Um, and yeah, I, can, I think I can still drive as well. And you can, it's like basically a bit like a tank. So like you can drive the left tracks, or you can drive the right tracks about. See that? So you know, you can even drive them about. And I done that by making a fast rototron. Which I think you've seen in a previous video. So yeah, I need I need a bit of help really. I mean, I'm, I need to know basically. Do I need to make the shape of that scoop a bit better? Maybe I need to sort of put some housing on the outside. And I need to also need a bit of code so that when it's in the furnace and if it's hot, I if this thing is facing the sun basically. And for now, I just want to see if the rock go into the hopper and just pretend it is. Just um, turn that into cargo so the rocks get deleted. And that unit there has a bit of code in it that says, has this menu that says, um, I've got three calcium, I've got two titanium, I've got one tantalum, I've got five ice, which I suppose you could turn into water, oxygen and fuel. Yeah, you know. So basically, depending on where you are, it's just going to produce a bunch of variety of different rocks. But at the same time, because when you saw too many rocks got spawned, it just made the game really, really chuggy. I want those rocks to be despawned, and that's, that's the rock spawner, the drill. Yeah. That's the rock despawner, the furnace, okay? And the purpose of these two bits is just to get them from rock on the ground into the furnace, okay? Now, and I want to do that using the Unity engine physics as much as possible, but if there's something that the engine can't do, I really need help with coding. Anyone can give me a help, I'd be really grateful, thank you.